fewest points allowed. And after the no yards penalty, Lions start in Winnipeg territory. That pass skipped short of Sean Gore, incomplete. BC minus three yards against Tim Burke's defense in the second half. And that year, 21 to 25 categories, the Alouettes led defensively. Well, they're leading defensively in all of those categories here in Winnipeg under Tim Burke. This offseason was interesting. Tim Burke went and talked to an old friend, Dom Capers, the defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers, and he talked about how they use Clay Matthews down there and wanted to use Odell Willis in a very similar way in Winnipeg. And boy, has that paid off for that conversation. Second and ten, Lions. Jackson over the middle, and that's too high for Simon. Incomplete. Ian Logan, the safety, almost had the interception. Another two and out. And they're still minus yardage-wise in the second half. And the offense is going to stay on the field with 8.05 to go. Well, down by 20, you really don't have much of a choice now if you're the BC Lions. I mean, you just got to try and get something positive. 13 of the 23 takeaways coming into the game had come in the fourth quarter for the Bombers looking for another fourth quarter turnover here. And that pass is complete. Is it enough for the first down? Sean Gore the catch. And this will be close, giving him a great spot. And that is a first down. It is. An 11-yard gain for Sean Gore to keep the Lions offense on the field. Well, it was a similar play. They tried to get the ball to G. Roy Simon on the overthrow. Pressure in the face of Jarius Jackson again. And Pretty precise route run by Sean Gore. Here's Jackson looking deep. Oh, it's Gore, and again, misses him by a step. You know, and this is when you when you watch offenses in the first two games of the regular season, you, you see a little bit more of this, where quarterbacks are just overthrowing open receivers because the timing isn't quite there. It takes offenses a little more time to get going. Well, you're seeing that. Th that's what the situation is for Jarius Jackson. He doesn't get all the reps for the number one team in practice so he's really in game one for him and live action and missing those receivers like you would in game one for any team. Lions will be in Edmonton next Friday. Bombers have the break. That pass is caught. No. Simon couldn't hold on. Almost a circus catch. In another battle against Jonathan Hefney. Yeah, Hefney just stands there and stares him down and waits. It has been a good battle. A couple of catches for G. Roy Simon, but just as many knockdowns for Jonathan Hefney. He thought, thought about, about it. Yeah, thought about challenging that. I was interested. To, he had to survive contact to the ground. And now he and is now going he to throw it out. take a look. I'm surprised. I'm su surprised he bothered. But. Well, at the command center made the, the final verdict. Didn't look like a catch from this point of view. Well, he, he has, but he has possession of the ball when his knee touches. So you have to survive. He doesn't have possession yet. Now he has possession. His knee touches. But does he use the ground to try and does help? Does he even trap the ball? That's what I mean. Use it to help trap him. the ball there. BC is challenging the ruling of an incomplete pass on the play. And we'll as he, review it. As he rolls here, the right hand comes off the ball. The ball pops loose. And you wouldn't think that's surviving contact. And he used the ground to help him. So I, I, I don't think you overturn that one. Well, we've got the opportunity. Uh, the Bombers tell us over 27,000 tickets already sold for oh, their boy. next game, August 26th. So you know that's going to be a virtual sellout and only 500 seats available for the Banjo Bowl. And that will be off the hook. Oh. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It was an incomplete pass.
So it'll be third down once again. Been able to convert once on third and ten. And, and consider this too: the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers lost by one point. Their only loss of the season to the Calgary Stampeders on a, on a field goal that missed by inches. Or they're perfect. There's Jackson under duress, trying to get outside, and he's brought down. Another turnover on downs. Another turnover created by the Bombers, Jason Vega, dropping Jarius Jackson. No Doug Brown, no Dorian Smith, no problem. I mean, Jason Vega's played well. He's rotated in. How about Bryant Turner, who's made some plays? We've seen Kenny Maynard. Odell Willis is a mainstay. I mean, they are buzzing. The Winnipeg Blue Bomber defense swarms. That's that's the word that's used in football when you're just constantly dodging white jerseys. It doesn't seem to matter who they substitute in there. They're flying around. Five turnovers on the game for the Lions. And now the Bombers are plus 19 giveaway takeaway in week seven. That's extraordinary. And it's Pierce in some trouble and but Pierce there's going to be a penalty at the yeah. end of that play as he's tossed down I'll be a face mask Alex Brink had been warming up on the sidelines and I wondered with five and a half to go whether or not they'd give Pierce the rest of the night off but Buck wants to finish what he started especially here in Vancouver yeah I, I, I think if major foul face mask BC will go up 15 yards from the point of last scrimmage. First down. You know, I, I hear you, Chris, but I, I think that I know quarterbacks like to finish it, but, but I think it would be a wise choice to get him out of the game right now. I mean, Khalif okay. Mitchell with the face mask. And with this defense, you're not going to give up more than 20 points in five minutes and 30 seconds with Alex Brink in the game. I, I think you get him out of there right now. This will be his last drive, but you're also leaving him out there to take more hits. And you know Buck Pierce is Buck Pierce. Once again, across midfield. Hand off to Reed and nothing there. They started the season with a win against Hamilton. Backed it up, 22-16 victory against Toronto. In week three, played the Calgary Stampeders and were this close to winning that game. Another four or five yards closer, and that ball goes through the uprights, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are perfect in 2011. They turns out they lose by one point to Calgary and are sitting here looking at six and one on the season. Well, the defense has been great all year, but the offense is seemingly getting better by the week. Here's Pierce to throw on second down. That went up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Ryan Phillips has the pick. And the Lions get the football back as Ryan Phillips has his second of the season and the 29th of his career. You know, and I, I don't want to rain on any parade because the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are a great story. They've got a 20-point lead here. Ryan Phillips gets his 29th pick. But I, I, I wonder and question about just the fact that Buck Pierce is out there and the fact that they're gunning it down the field here. I mean... Can run the ball. You got Fred Reed. You got a good running game. You want to keep your starting quarterback healthy for as long as you possibly can the entire season if possible. And I, again, you, you don't boo a home run. I, I knew that a long time ago. They're up by 20, and this team is going to improve to six and one. Uh, but you know, you still I question a couple of those decisions at the end. There is Jackson. Pierre Johnson, but Javon Johnson is right there. Are you surprised that we didn't see Travis Lule go back in? Yeah, I, I'm surprised that, that it wasn't a series or two and then put Travis Lule because, you know, when I watched the reaction and the emotional reaction from Lule, I, I felt that that was probably why Wally Buono took him out. He, he looked at him and said, look, you've been so throughout your 16 starts and it's just been 16 not even a full season and yet he he lost a little bit of that composure take him out let him relax Bruce took it. 
and then put him back in. And, and there's a guy that you know is put in the put in the lineup a week and a half after signing hasn't made a real impact tonight. Not at all, and needed a couple shots at that football to bring it in. 12-yard gain. And for Arlen Bruce, that's his fourth catch of the night. Jackson in trouble, tossed down again, Donnie O. Donnie Aramisian with a sack for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And now they have four on the game, so here in the third in the fourth quarter they have three and they pad their stats with now 29 sacks on the year three minute warning to the bench the employee against Edmonton and tonight even stingier second and long Odell Willis can't bring him down and Julius Jackson still going well Odell almost kept the quarterback streak sack streak intact here but Jarius Jackson got away and picks up 11 and the Lions look at another third down still coming hard 20 point lead nothing changes up front watch Odell Willis come off the edge and just beat that cut block that's what Ben Archibald's strategy was to slow down Odell Willis cut him third and five and another sack a loose ball and they're gonna rule in the grasp or incomplete. They want to. Paul Apolise out in the field told Marcellus Bowman to take the ball and run it into the end zone because they may challenge this. And Winnipeg has run the football into the end zone. And now let's see if they get a challenge. Well, and I don't know if they would give him the yards anyway because I did hear a whistle at some point to stop the play. And once the play is stopped, you can you can challenge and give possession there's Kenny Maynard ball loose and you see Bowman here he takes a look Paul Apolise about 10 yards out on the field and he's still out there got the game face on with a 20 point lead and under two and a half minutes to go but there was no challenge and it's a turnover on downs and I'm really surprised Buck Pierce is still in this game Well, he's handing it off to Fred Reed, and he might do well to just keep doing that. Reed across the 50-yard line. Here's a guy, though, that everybody says can't finish. He has been only able to finish 27 of 45 starts in his career, three of five this year. And I don't know, does it mean anything to send a message he's going to go wire to wire? Risky. Risky when it's not necessary. 27, he'll he'll improve to 28, 17, and one career. And another high percentage night for Buck Pierce, who's been at around 75% now for four straight weeks. There's Reed, and he'll be dropped for a loss. Yeah, and maybe that's what I think people were trying to, you know, just to completely buy into this Winnipeg team. They knew the defense and what it was capable of from week one. And I think the question marks were still kind of hanging around this offense. But when you look at what they put together the last couple of weeks, Buck Pierce at 74 percent last week. He's over 70 percent again. He had 242. And early on in the game, we showed you that clip from Paul Apolise talking about his quarterback and how he just finds a way to make those plays. Sometimes the yardage don't jump off the map, but he makes the big plays like the big 48 yard run last week to win that game. I mean, he just. Swag, swag, swag. If the guy's a winner, he's got a winning record, and if they can keep him on the field, that's why inside of three minutes with a 20-point lead, real surprised to see him out there. You know, he's savoring the night. Second time this year, the Bombers have been over 30 points. Okay, let them go! Here's Pierre Johnson showing his speed, and it is Mike Renault that has to bring him down at midfield 26 yard return for newcomer Kier Johnson a minute 46 remaining blue bombers are going to be first going into the bye 
And again, they've got Hamilton on August the 26th at home. Well, you know one thing, T-shirt sales are going up. Swaggerville, welcome to Swaggerville T-shirts. Those sales will go up. Plus, I'm sure tattoo parlors will start to become more busy. Yeah, they were busy this week. There's uh, another drop, Andrew Harris. Busier. In the flat. Busier, I think, is the correct English. <laughs> the only bad news for Winnipeg this week was that both Montreal and Hamilton won. So we've got ourselves oh, a, yeah. a great race in the East. And when was the last time we said Eastern teams were six and one, five and two, and four and three? And the Argos, the Rough Riders, and the BC Lions all off to slower starts than I think anybody anticipated. Jackson going deep. Akeem Foster. Touchdown. Well, something to cheer about for the fans that hung in here. 54-yard touchdown toss from Jarius Jackson. He missed, he missed on the first couple, Chris, but he hooks up here with Akeem Foster. And the rookie receiver out of St. FX has his fourth touchdown of the year. Torpedo, be ready. Torpedo, be ready. Torpedo, ready. Here we go. Torpedo, ready. Well, the hands team getting the alert on the Lions pitch. Lost to the catch and McCallum the extra point. He got stiff and worked. Well, it likes to not change the outcome. But it will be one of the Akeem Foster highlight reels. And this will be one that he tapes this game. He'll bring it home. He's a wide receiver. Does that deep post. And Jarius Jackson puts nice air under this ball so he can run underneath it. Got good speed, a long strider. Again, another one of those young Canadian receivers that are starting to make an impact in the CFL. And there's a good, there's a handful of them. Unless the Lions add more points, it'll be the fifth time this year in seven starts. Winnipeg's held their opponents to 20 or less. Fern Kashawa was shaken up on the extra point play, and he's getting help to the sidelines. So a minute 32 left. And Maynard! Maynard! A short kick team comes onto the field. I thought the CEO of Swaggerville there was going to call on a board meeting or board meeting there and say, hey, we may have this game wrapped up, but I don't want to give away big plays like that either. Well, yeah, let us go. Or, or is he just hey, booking his restaurant for to later tonight here in city. Vancouver? I think that might be closer. <laughs> doesn't look overly perturbed by that last Lions touchdown. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> so McCallum can put this one up at about 10 yards deep. Up for grabs, and it's grabbed by the Bombers. Terrence Edwards comes down with the football, and the Bombers' offense goes back out. Well, and Buck Pierce is going to go Buck wire Pierce to gonna wire. Finish. He's going to go wire to wire. Now, he's just going to hand it off a couple times here. Very well called game by Jamie Barisi, the offensive coordinator for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We talked about both these coordinators, Jamie Barisi and Tim Burke. And Jamie Barisi really has paid his dues. I mean, he's been around a long time he volunteered out of the gate he was sleeping in offices and doing that kind of thing to get this opportunity and he's making the best of it and good on him six and one spent some time here so it's a victorious return to Vancouver for both the quarterback and the play caller tonight and off to Reed left side Bombers can run it out if they can get one more first down. Khalif Mitchell uh, looks like he's been shaken up on that last play. Mitchell who had a solid first half for the Lions. It's a good first half, highly competitive, 13-10, and Winnipeg completely dominated the third quarter and 
in the second half. In fact, they now have six takeaways in the game. Well, and, and when you looked at that first half, Chris, it was it was a good competitive first half, a three-point game, I believe, when they went in at halftime. But a few mistakes took some big plays off the board, a couple of penalties for the BC Lions. And Paul LaPolice's defense will take advantage of that. You know, Paul LaPolice has... That's how this team is six and one. Their defense creates the turnovers. Their offense stays balanced and within itself and puts the necessary points on the board. He's got a good game plan going. They're a well-prepared team. And he took advantages of those BC mistakes. I mean, it was a competitive game until a couple of penalties took some big plays off the board for the Lions. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers grabbed momentum in the third, as you mentioned, and they just took off with it from there. They now have on the year 29 takeaways and 30 sacks and we're just about to finish week seven they swarm and, and here they go and they got swagger and they've got some swagger he grabbed it too and 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 oh oh do oh, 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 swag 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 oh, 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 started the game with that dance and he's from, ending it. Alabama, that is. Well, through seven weeks, he is uh, probably a consensus hey, pick as the Rick top Rose. defensive player in the Rick league. Rick right there, man. Hey, Rob. You know what? And, and Paul Apolis, although he is trying to, I think, at times contain a little of that Swaggerville stuff, he wants his team to enjoy it, and he should. Here's Reed breaks the tackle. He said he only wanted to hear them talk on game day. He said this was a business trip, and boy, did they uh, stick to their business tonight. 